Good morning. Welcome to the Mission Control Center here in Houston. We are uh, working today on, an, uh, or we're talking today rather, with a principal investigator of one of the experiments the crew worked on earlier this week, the body measures experiment. One of the main things that uh, we are trying to learn as the crew lives in space for these long periods of time is how that uh, stay in space affects their body. And the body measure experiment looks at exactly that. So this is uh, Su Sudakar Rajulu, who is going to be telling us a little bit about that experiment. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. So tell us, first of all, just to explain kind of what the body measures experiment is. Right. Uh, the body measures experiment is to uh, understand uh, when crew members spend the time in space, how their body uh, dimensions change. Like, for instance, the height, you know, the stature of the person, and also uh, circumference, because there are fluid shape that happens that, you know, you can see the crew member's face in space, kind of like puffed up, you know, because of the fluid shift from feet to the to the head, you know. So there are changes in the taper that happens in space uh, that could affect how they are wearing the suit, for instance. This is a space suit, or it's a space suit, yeah. So when crew members go into space, uh, because of some changes that happen to their stature and things like that they need to be re resized in space. So uh, uh, because of that, uh, there are <coughs> uh, things that do not uh, remain the same as, as they were measured in sp uh, on the ground. So when they go into space, you have to adjust for those things. <coughs> And that's what the reason for the t testing. Okay, so you see a number of different changes, it sounds like. You mentioned that you can even observe from the ground that their faces get maybe a little puffy. Right. That's from the fluid shift. You mm -hmm. also, I think, said they get taller. Is that right? They do get taller. Uh, and uh, it's, it, uh, it varies from pe uh, person to person. But uh, in general, uh, there is a growth in space. It's because of the elongation of the spine. Um. And uh, are those changes permanent? Those changes remain so long they are in space. But when they come back, most of them revert back to the normal position. Okay, so yeah. you just need to, you can't really measure on the ground when they get back what it's like, so you measure it in space. In right? space, right. So what is, how does that work? What does that look like? Uh, what do you mean, how does it look like? What, what, how did they actually go about measuring, making those measurements in space? Well, if you're on ground, we have different devices to m measure them, like anthropometers and, uh, you know, different devices that we have. Uh, it takes time also to do that. In space, what we're doing is um, using what we call video analysis. We take pictures of the crew members uh, in specific postures. And, uh, I think here's a... a it's an example, like... Uh, uh, we identify the markers on the body, and we place some reflective markers okay. on uh, the uh, uh, specific landmarks on the body. We identify those things before they go into space. And we place those markers and take, uh, you know, when we take a picture uh, using photogrammetric technique, we can then identify the distance between two of those markers. So, for instance, uh, we put place one on top of your head, and we know where you're standing on the floor. So, the distance between the head to the floor will give us the height. Okay. Same thing with the shoulder height. You know, we put markers on the shoulder. Okay, a little, little more complex <clears throat> than just marking it on the wall like you might do for a kid at home. Right. I mean, it's you can do that. I mean, crew members have done that. But since we are concerned about sizing precisely the suit, we need to have scientific measurement uh, techniques and repeatability so that when we tell the uh, sizing engineers how much you have to allow for it, it will be more precise. Okay. Yeah. What, so why is that important? Why exactly do we need to know precisely what these measurements are? Well, um, for instance, um, uh, like I said, the suits are sized uh, before the crew members go into in space. Uh, when we had the shuttle, uh, the crew members had their own suits, and they would uh, be they would have been adjusted to account for some changes. Unfortunately, with the shuttle being retired, we are now relying on the suits that are on the station. And 
if you don't size them properly, you may run into difficulties uh, in getting into the suit or it may be uncomfortable for you. In fact, recently, about six months ago, we had a crew member who had just a little bit tight fit into the suit. So um, it is necessary for us to help the sizing engineers to uh, account for it. And if it is variable from person to person, then we can then inform the crew members how to size themselves in space. We don't have the luxury of having the suits sent by the shuttle like we used to do before. Okay. And um, I guess it's really important for the spacesuits to fit well as they are Absolutely. doing spacewalks. Absolutely, yes. Because, you know, you don't want to be in a suit for 8 to 10 hours and having, you know, to deal with uh, discomfort. And that may, you know, distract you from doing the tasks, or you may have to, uh, you know, not have a successful, successful mission, and which is a very difficult thing to do. You know, when you are planning for important tasks and you're going to be out in the suit for eight hours or nine hours, we need to make sure that it is as comfortable as possible for the crew members. Okay, so um, I guess that's. Uh even if they're not necessarily doing a, a spacewalk now, they're still participating maybe in this experiment. Uh, I guess they were doing taking some measurements yesterday for the experiment. Do you, right. um, when they are on on orbit, taking the measurements? You talked about putting the reflective mm -hmm. um, markers. markers on and and taking the measurements. Is that is that the extent of it, or is there more? Well, what we want to do is that uh, certain measurements, uh, like here's an example of the setup how we want the crew members to be measured. Uh, there are cer cer certain things we need to, we also want to capture. Uh, in doing the Skylab, what we found was that uh, as soon as you go into uh, zero gravity, uh, there is this sudden increase in the height, and there is a, another phase where the height was still growing a little bit. So it kind of like it took a while for it to plateau it out. Okay. okay? So we also want to measure uh, the, the durational change, you know, if is there a, uh, you know, growth continuing throughout the mission or it, uh, you know, kind of plateaus out. So we have periodically measuring these measurements, um, not just the height, but also circumference uh, at the chest, calf level and thigh, level, th th thigh circumference. Uh, the reason for that is that we want to make sure, uh, if we want to tell the sizing engineer, uh, you need to make this adjustment. Is it something going to be remain constant throughout the mission? Because the crew members are going to be there on space, on the space station for, you know, six months to, you know, three to six months. So if it's changing, we need to be able to account for it. Otherwise, we can say, you know, it's a constant sizing delta that they can apply to it. Okay. So we are measuring, you know, periodically. Okay. Well, just one more question, and then we'll wrap it up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we always like to hear about it. This sounds pretty specific to, mm -hmm. to space flight, but are there applications for us here on Earth as well? Is there, are there any benefits? Well, right now, I think it's more specifically geared towards suit sizing. But one thing we notice is that we just finished one data collection. One crew member had participated. We haven't even finished the analysis yet. But we're noticing that calf circumference changes a lot. It actually decreases. And that's mostly because of the muscle atrophy. But it's still preliminary, you know. Uh, ultimately, what we really want is clothing and suits are self-adjustable, right? And uh, if we find that uh, there are means to do that, that may have impact also. And then also we have bed rest studies, you know, we have same similar situation that happens for, group, uh, for the subjects undergo changes in the body dimensions. So there may be some benefit there too, yeah. Okay, well great, we look forward to hearing more about that. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming and speaking with us. Again, this was uh, Sudhakar Rajulu, who is uh, the principal investigator for the body measures experiment. Thanks so much. Thank you.